Right. So the um, third um, discipline um, that we need to make it make part of our lives is um, is to release the past. Okay. So what do we mean by that? Release the past. You know, the thing is that as um, human beings, the way we are created, right? We, uh, you know, what we have here, our memory, our mind is so powerful, right? We remember so many things. At the same time, we also forget, you know, some things, some important things. Um, so, whatever we've been through in the past, in the recent past or the distant past, whatever, um, we remember. Right, certain things that have happened to us, what people have spoken, um, you know, certain things are just there, and um, and also disappointments, hurts, right? Uh, the way people, some people, maybe things that they said which hurt us, um, uh, you know, it, it's all there, right? So when we say release our past, we're not saying that it'll be a complete erasure of all those memories right so uh, many times we we think okay as far as east is from the west so far as he removed our sins and the lord you know forgives and he forgets yes he does but as human beings you know we find it very difficult uh, or next to impossible to forget right these things stay so what do we mean when we say release the past right what actually holds us back and withholds us from walking in freedom is the pain of that memory right is the pain that of that disappointment the pain of that regret the pain of that uh, you know of those words that were spoken right so those are the things that are like an anchor in the wrong place right we are so anchored to that that we find find it difficult to move forward Right. So when we say we release the past, those are the things that we are intentionally, you know, uh, getting healed of and releasing and and getting released from. So those are the very things. So the so the Lord heals us, and we intentionally, you know, after uh, we like we went through those ten steps of uh, renouncing, uh, you know, forgiving and uh, and saying, you know, and and confessing and proclaiming. So after that, what happens is. These thoughts come back, right? These memories do come back, and uh, we need to remember and remind ourselves to say, you know, that's under the blood. You know, I choose to release. I choose to not stay there. I choose to press on. I choose to move forward. Okay, and um, and this is something that we intentionally do, and we see that the Lord heals us of those pains. The Lord heals us of, you know, all those the pain of those disappointments. So we come to a place of, of even you know if even if we've been through certain traumatic, painful, uh, shameful things, either because of our own decisions or maybe others, um, we come to a place of being healed and restored uh, that we are able to even talk about it and use that as a testimony, right? But that would happen only when we release release the past. Okay, so the thing is that uh, the past, the pain of the past, has um, the perfect ability to hold us prisoners if we would let. Okay, to hold us prisoners, to hold us captive. So we we are unable. We are uh, we have don't don't have that ability to move forward into the promises of God. Okay, for example, maybe you know we we failed miserably academically. Okay, uh, regarding our studies, you know we failed and uh, messed up, uh, didn't make use of opportunities that were given to us or that were there before us. We messed up. Okay, so and we are in a certain place, you know, in life. Now, uh, let's say there is an opportunity for us to maybe uh, you know upgrade our skills or you know further learn. Uh, new things uh, academically, okay. So immediately, what happens is this memory of this painful failure that we did not do what was supposed to be done, or we we did not put in the necessary effort, whatever. You know that pain uh, prevents us from even stepping into or taking up this initiative, 
right? We we don't want to take it up. Why? Because you know we messed up that time, or we messed up those three or four times. So we cannot, you know, that is that is a reminder, you know, uh, uh, that is the notification we get. You know, don't don't take up because you cannot. Don't take up because you failed in the past. So so we 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 consciously make a choice and I'm not going to take it up because this is what happened in my life. And so I'm just going to, I'm not going to venture into those things again, right? Um, so what has happened here, the, the pain of failure, the pain of uh, maybe shame of failure, whatever, is, is holding us back, right? So that needs to be intentionally, we need to release ourselves from it. Um, so how do we do that? How do we, um, you know, is, is, so this, this is just one thing, right? This, so there could be countless um, things, countless things, countless memories that uh, really prevent us. So we need to really process that with the Lord. You know, that's why our time with the Lord is so important. And, and um, he actually reminds us, he would remind us, he would show us if we are sen sensitive, say, hey, this needs to, this is actually under the blood. Why are you still holding on to it? Why are you anchored to the wrong thing? You know, you need to be anchored to the truth. Okay, and uh, and a couple of examples that we see in scripture. Uh, one is that of Jacob. Okay, Jacob, we know the story. <clears throat> he had cheated Esau of the birthright. He ran away, spent time with uh, his uncle, and um, now he was coming back as a married man. And uh, he was coming back um, with with a lot of wealth. Actually, God has prospered him, and and he's coming back. And uh, he was the next day. He's you know he's he's supposed to be meeting Esau, uh, or the next day, or you know eventually he's going to be meeting Esau. But um, now he is um, he is scared, right? Uh, and he's he cries out to God, and uh, and he hears that. Um, uh, he, he gets news that Esau is coming to meet him, and he's not just coming to meet him alone. He's coming with a you know whole bunch of people, um, and so he is naturally he's afraid. Uh, will Esau hold it against him? Will Esau, uh, you know, uh, so you know everything in the natural? He's, he's so afraid uh, about this whole situation, right? So then, then we read about what happened that night. And he wrestles with God when he in, encounters uh, God, and he and he's in, you know he just uh, engages with God, and he says, "God, I will, Lord, I will not let go until you bless me." Okay, and then we see that he is given a new name. <clears throat> that he is the name is changed from Jacob, which means the one who cheats, to Israel, the a prince with God. Right? God gives him um, literally a new identity. Right. With that name change comes uh, everything that is associated with the name. The truth that is the, the, of the name you know, becomes his identity. And then he goes to meet Esau with a new identity. Okay, So there's a lesson there for us that when we meet or when we are faced with challenges, okay, when we are faced with uh, things of the past, um, we do not meet them or we do not face them with our old identity right now we 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 have received a new identity and and that's a fact that we are new creations and and all that has happened but when we when when the past comes up right when we uh, when we are faced with certain things the consequences of the past uh, there's no escaping it of course but we meet with it or we face it with our new identity Right, with who we have become. So with our new identity, we our relationship with God has changed. Our relationship with other people has changed. Because the way we relate to them has changed. Right? We are um we 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 um, the whole situation, the circumstance and everything could be could be the same, but there's some change that has happened with this which is within. So we we face it with that with that change within. Right, uh, and another another example that we have is that of Joseph. Okay, so Joseph uh, being sold into slavery, uh, being taken to a foreign land, and worked there as a slave, and there also, you know, facing so much of, uh, um, you know, so much of difficulty in the palace, in the in the in the house of Potiphar, um, and being wrongly accused and put into prison, and all through it all, you know, through the whole thing. His 
um, you know, now, of course, he didn't have the understanding or the revelation that we have right now, that of the cross and what has happened to us. But amazingly, he held on to the integrity and he held on to this understanding that God was with him throughout. And the fact that he should not um, let go of um, his integrity right, uh, in the face of God. So even though he had many opportunities to let go, even though he was, uh, you know, ample, uh, you know, kind of uh, reasons, um, we could say, to, to really let go, but he did not, right? Um, so we see this uh, when we read G Genesis 41 and 51. He called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second one he called Ephraim, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my afflictions. Okay, so so he uh, came with that understanding. And this was so deep rooted within that he named his children. You know, naming a child, um, you know, if you're a parent, you, you know, you, you want the uh, you want it to be of significance. You want uh, that to be the identity of the child, and you want something. It, it's with a lot of tenderness. It's with a lot of thought, right? And especially these days, you you get some fancy names, you know, uh, and uh, people are do doing all kinds of research, and you know, like we hear these names come up in our baby dedications, you know, um, time and time again, and then we're like, oh wow, what does that mean? And then it has some uh, deep significance, right? Um, so. He is naming his children. Okay, he's naming his firstborn as Manasseh and secondborn as Ephraim, and it is to do with all that, all the years that he has, whatever has happened in the past. Everything is contained in that name, and it it just reminds him over and over again, this is what has happened, right? Um, that uh, God has made me forget, that God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of affliction. So. Even before that, when we, you know, when we see the interaction that he has with his brothers, we see that wow, you know, there's there's so much of freedom uh, in his life. He meets with his brothers, and he says in verse 19, Genesis 15, verse 19, uh, what we see on the screen. You now, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about, as it is in this day, to save many people alive therefore do not be afraid and he goes on to say i will provide for your needs for the family and so on uh, because it's famine right so uh, we see he faces uh, i mean god vindicates him in an amazing way god has raised him up uh, and uh, he faces what has happened you know his uh, the people who had caused him harm so he's so healed on the inside that he's able to face them. He's so healed on the inside that he's able to return, uh, you know, um, return with a good deed, even though they had actually they had messed up his life. So he, he he somehow had the understanding that God will turn things around. Yes, this is what he's going through, but God will turn things around, and God did turn things around. Okay. So some practical things, you know, we, we see these examples, great examples in scripture. So some practical things for us, you know, as we as we go through, because when we go through painful uh, seasons and it can be extremely painful and uh, some of these things we cannot even share with others. Um, and I mean, in the sense, others may not understand, even though we share it, the extent of that pain. Right. But um, but the thing is to to heal and to move. To heal and to move forward. So, okay. So, how do we do that practically? Right? How do we do that? How do we face that? Um, this is something that uh, we can do. Okay. First thing is to give up our right. Okay. Give up our right to hold our past. Okay. Very important. Because we we actually hold it, it, is, it is because we feel that we have a right to hold on. Uh, maybe it's a grudge, 
uh, maybe it's um, some kind of a um, you know bitterness we feel that we have a right to hold on we have a right to um, hold on to these emotions we have a right to hold on to how we feel uh, we have a right to uh, uh, you know hold on to those instances and everything um, for the simple reason that we feel that we feel that we have been wronged and, and some of these things are against God himself right um, we're angry with God if you're angry with God and, and say you know how can you how could you God how dare you God after all that I've done, and after all the way that I've lived, how could you right, be angry with him? But uh, we need to understand that as long as we are in that place of holding on, you know, I have a right to be angry. I have a right to have this uh, thing against this person. I have a right to be unforgiving against this person for all that he or she has done. As long as we uh, have that mentality, we cannot move forward. Okay, so there's no question of releasing the past because it's a very deep anchor uh, right there. So, so what is the solution? Or oh, yeah, uh, Divya has a question. Yes, Divya. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Uh, I, uh, in in terms of releasing the past, uh, yeah. if um, there are situations where uh, your trust has been breached. Um, and it's nothing like you have anything against the person or mm. uh, you have released forgiveness for them, but uh, still um, to reestablish a relationship like earlier would, would be really difficult, right? Uh, yep. Because uh, we, uh, because uh, there won't be a clarity, um, basically, uh, uh, whether the same thing could happen again. So, so is that wrong to hmm. um, yeah. in, when we say releasing the past? Right, right. Yeah, it's a very valid uh, point in the sense, uh, okay, we release the past. You know, personally, we've done, we've forgiven, um, we've released the person. But um, do we reinstate the person to the same, you know, level of relationship of trust and transparency and so on? Because trust is broken now, you know. Uh, and it can be in various situations, you know, uh, it can be a professional work situation, it can be a ministry team kind of a, you know, uh, situation, or it can be a home, you know, like a spouse uh, uh, or close relative spouse, you know. So, uh, you know, in all these scenarios, um, there, there is that, you know, it is difficult because, um, uh, you know, how can you trust again? So, um, you know, when it comes to a work uh, or a ministry uh, kind of a scenario, then you know the the right thing to do would be to not to entrust critical uh, you know uh, or tasks of critical consequence to the person right uh, because now trust is broken let's say you know if the person has uh, swindled some money now you're not going to put that person in charge of handling finance again okay so there has to be a change there till you are confident yes um, this person can actually do this again. Okay, so so it can be a very uh, you know it, it can be discussed with the person saying you know um, uh, this is what you know the, going forward this is what we are going to do. Now I know you are in charge of this, but uh, you do not have access to it, and I'm uh, and it's for a season, and and I will decide. You know, if you are in a place of you know making that decision, you can say I will decide uh, when to do that. So that's absolutely fine because you you want to observe. You want to see if there's change, transformation, and then interest. Same uh, in uh, in a, if it's going to be a close relationship, you know, trust is broken. Then um, definitely, you know, with the forgiveness, with the you know, if it's mutual in the sense, you know, if you're you know with a with a spouse or a close relationship, a relationship, uh, close relative or a family member, then it even it becomes even more complex, right? So at one level, you know, we can say, okay, uh, you know, you both of uh, i mean the person has uh, repented person is uh, uh, you know feeling sorry for what he or she has done and uh, you know wants to get back to uh, you know how things were so even then you can you can say you know you need to give me time right? it can be a conversation where i know we are going to marriage and we are going in, into marriage and family kind of a you know thing but then you know this is how we can do it uh, saying that okay uh, we need I, I need time i need to time to process so you know bear with me 
uh, and so there are certain things that I need to see. Uh, so you know, while we while I while I've forgiven, and uh, you know, you, you need to give me some time. Okay, uh, that's one thing. But the other thing is that you know, if the person has not repented or um, you know, there's no change, right? And uh, for your sake, right, or for what the, the Lord has done for us, you know, the, what He has. Uh, what he has laid down in scripture, you know, we release forgiveness so that we can be free, right? Um, so we are not reinstating trust. We are not going back to the, you know, how things were, because things are still bad. You know, it, maybe it's abusive. Maybe um, trust is continuing to be broken. But we are releasing forgiveness, and we, you know, there's no way we are condoning the act, and there's no way where we are, you know, uh, trusting in the sense but uh, we are releasing forgiveness right and that's perfectly fine right sure thank you thank you pastor okay right so um so the thing is to give up our right to hold on to the things of the past we need to be able to say lord uh, you know sometimes it's it's giving up our right to even understand you know, when it comes to certain things that have happened and and maybe god uh, you know it's a relationship with god and then saying lord i don't understand why why did this happen i don't understand why i you know i had to go through that season um i don't understand so as long as we don't understand can we trust god who has infinite wisdom and knowledge and understanding yeah, we, we don't understand, but can we trust him with our future? Can we trust him uh, because he has infinite understanding? Can we trust him for his nature and character and everything that we see in scripture? Okay. Like Job, Job says, though he slay me, I will, yet I will trust him. Right? Like uh, Daniel's friends, they said, O oh, king, our God will save, but even then, even if he does not, you know, we don't know why, even if he does not, we will not bow down and worship. Okay, so uh, if we have that level of trust, then definitely we can move forward. Right? We can experience freedom, move forward. So while uh, releasing, so these are some things to release, you know, uh, to, uh, when it comes to releasing the past, these are practical things. Okay, I, I uh, forsake my right to hold on. Okay, and also one of the most difficult things is uh, letting go of the right to have a grudge against yourself. You know, it can be a very subtle thing because you're just kicking yourself mentally over and over again. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Um, and and the thing is this. Just by kicking yourself mentally, just by punishing yourself, you know, some people even might do it physically, right? Punishing oneself. Just by doing that, it's not going to change the past. Okay. And to top it all, it's going to make one's life miserable, where we don't enjoy the present and we're not able to step in fully, freely into the freedom. And the future that God has for us. Okay, so so what's what's the point, right? To punish ourselves mentally, to punish ourselves uh, emotionally, um, and uh, and, I, and I, I did that, you know, I did that because uh, uh, in my twelfth standard I didn't do well, tenth standard I did well, twelfth standard I didn't do well. So I I did that, you know, I just um, uh, I said okay, um, I don't, you know, I, I've left let let down my parents, uh, so I don't want to. You know, they were willing to uh, put me in a college and uh, and say, okay, maybe uh, maybe we can get some money and you know get some, one of those um, management courses and uh, or management quota. You know, that's what you call right. So the management quota, where even if you don't have the sufficient marks, you can uh, still do a professional course. Or, uh, so I said, no, no, I don't want to get in there. I just want to do something very, very basic. Uh, I'll do something that I'm not worthy of all these things. So it just went on for many years till uh, you know I, I just finished that course and till I could get in merit uh, the postgraduate you know, management course. T till then it was like a you know a very deep struggle. Of course, 
uh, didn't know these truths, but uh, I can say that I just shrank every time, you know, there was a talk about academics and everything. Um, so I just punished myself that way, right, for letting down my parents. And I also try and, you know, pay for the fees myself, even though my parents were willing to pay. I just like, you know, uh, I had to repeat some papers and, and I would just try to get the money and try to pay for it myself and, um, you know, all those kinds of things, right? So we can do, you know, practically in our lives, we end up doing these things um, in, in order to punish ourselves, okay? And say, okay, I don't, I don't deserve this. The fact is that uh, it really uh, does not matter. It's not going to change the past. Right? The, the best thing to do is to keep moving forward and uh, and and do things better, right? And do things better and uh, uh, and uh, and see and walk into all that God has. Right? So it's about releasing ourselves as well, giving up the right um, to hold things against ourselves as well. Okay. The second thing practical thing that we can do is to place our past into God's hands. Okay. To play place our, our past, you know, some of our maybe for some of us it's 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 all been fine. It's all been nice, happy, you know, great. But for some of us it's it's really checkered with a lot of challenges, a lot of trauma, um, a lot of difficulties. Okay. Now can we place that you know, the consequence of the past, the pain and hurt and everything that has happened, can we place it in God's hands? Okay. Um, I remember, a, you know, uh, and a story, uh, no, I mean, the real uh, real life story, of course, uh, of this person who, who actually married, murdered his own relatives, right? He was thrown in prison, uh, murdered his own relatives, in prison, became a believer. Okay. And he, and he vowed to do something for people like him, who are in prison um, and uh, who who cannot uh, you know who cannot undo the past, right? so started ministering. And so, um, when we look at you know such lives, we see that the only thing that you can do, you know, you can't go back. You know, when you if you meet your family, if you meet your relatives, you're always reminded, and right? you're always reminded of what you have done, the consequence of that action. You know, is is always there. So the only thing that you can do to overcome is to place that all that has happened. You know, you you see the enormity of that, right? Uh, whole thing to place that in God's hands. I'm reminded of you know, um, uh, even the uh, uh, even Apostle Paul, right? Even Apostle Paul, the way he persecuted the church and and uh, and. And he comes to a place of saying that, you know, forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. Okay. Forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. So we need to place that past into God's hands. We need to absolutely do that. Um, because he remembers... He is, I mean, he for, he forgives, he remembers them no more, and he has promised to make everything new. Okay. So let's let's read uh, some of these scriptures, you know, uh, Psalm 103 and verse 12. Okay, Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us so god is removed but we can keep it very clear very close to our hearts okay. god is removed but we can because we have a will we have a choice um, we can choose to keep it close to us or we can do what god we can go with god and uh, and the one who has removed our sins away from us as far as east is from the west um, we can go with him. We can we can choose him, and we can choose his decision and his action, the way he sees our past, and that'll be you know that that'll be healing, right, for us. Um, Hebrews ten and verse seventeen. Hebrews ten verse seventeen. Their sins and their lawless deeds 
I will remember no no more, says the Lord. You know, this is from Jeremiah 31. Right? Their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. And before that, he, was, he says, you know, I will put my laws in their hearts and their minds. I will write them and so on. So uh, he has perfected us. He is sanctifying us. And he's saying, their sins, I will remember no more. You know, as he sanctifies us. Uh, this is what he says. So it makes sense for us to place our past, to entrust, uh, you know, the way we entrust our future, the way we entrust our even our present, to entrust our past into his hands. Okay. Um, uh, a few other things to release forgiveness, to release forgiveness to all those who have offended us, all those who have hurt us. Again, this is a reiteration of that. And stand firm with that decision. Now, this is this is very, very important. This is very important because we go through highs and lows emotionally. Right? We go we go through triumphs and failures. There are these mountaintop experiences. There are these valleys. Um, so when we go through those, especially those valleys, especially those, you know, maybe some kind of a failure. <clears throat> the thing is that there is always this invitation to revisit the hurt. Okay. There is always this opportunity, and the enemy does it, and our own unrenewed flesh does it, unrenewed mind thinking. Right? There is that thing to revisit the hurt, revisit those things. And uh, if you're not careful, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're not careful, we will actually go down that downward spiral again. We will. Uh, it'll be like opening up, you know, our wounds again <clears throat> if you are not careful or inflicting fresh wounds upon ourselves when we have been healed okay so refuse stand firm and uh, just remind yourself of the fact that of instead of the you know, instead of the hurt what god has done remind ourselves let's remind ourselves of what the lord has done let's remind ourselves of the fact that he is you know he is holding it's like you know it's like saying god you know god is taking something and he's saying okay i've taken it okay i've taken it um and it's fine but it's like going back and trying to pry his his hand open right try open those fingers and say god you know i i, I want to take that so stand firm and say no that's in god's hands now i have no right to grab it right it's he's taken he has removed he has taken it so i have no right to go down that path i have no right to visit that territory right i have no right so um so we go with what god has done and god what god wants to do okay isaiah 43 verses 18 and 19 do not remember the former things this is the lord's exhortation right do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I, even I, and he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. So this is the promise of God. He's saying, do not remember. The Lord is saying, do not make a, you know, make a choice to think on to to remember to go back to those things and to ponder on those things so he's saying remember consider you know do not remember nor consider consider is you know when you give it some weightage right when you uh, when we take some time to consider think about uh, give it some importance and give it some time and put in some effort that is when we consider the things of you know, consider something so the Lord is saying, do not remember, nor consider. Okay, and and the reason is this: He's saying, I will do a new thing. I will make a road in the wilderness. You know, even though our present seems to be like a wilderness, it, our present situation, circumstance, environment seems to be uh, desert-like or like a wilderness. He's saying, you know, I will make. I, even I, am he. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers 
in the desert. Rivers there will be refreshing for you, you know, even in that kind of a uh, situation. Right? So he's saying, I'll make rivers in the desert. And I'm the one who blots out your transgression for my own name's sake. And I will not remember your sins. Okay. So there's great reassurance. There's great reassurance from God himself. And if we would go back to remember and consider and revisit, you know, it's an act of pride. You know, we might actually say, okay, I'm pitying myself, but it's actually self-pity. Self-pity is actually an act of pride. You're placing, you know, we are placing ourselves even higher than God. Think about that, right? We are placing ourselves. Um, it, but it's it comes cloaked in an act of humility. It's like you're humbling yourself when you revisit those hurts. It's like I'm we're punishing ourselves. But actually, the self is bigger in magnitude. You know, you're just magnifying the self bigger than what God is saying or what God has done. Right? So it's a it's a very subtle pride. And and uh, you know we have no right to do that, right? Okay, Isaiah fifty four and verse four. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed; neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Okay, so uh, and so on. You know, instead of your shame, you will Isaiah sixty one seven. Instead of your shame, you will shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be there. So, um, you know, this is something th that is uh, for us as believers, for us as his, as his people. Okay. Um, so that brings us to some of those practical, you know, these are things that we need to be strong in. You know, it's a discipline, spiritual discipline. So these are some things that we need to be strong in. And it's not, again, a one-time thing. You know, um, and uh, and so much is really a key. Uh, you know, the key to this is the renewing of our mind. What we see in Romans chapter twelve, verses one and two. You know, to renew our minds to this. You know, this is how I'm going to respond to this situation. Like this is how I'm going to respond to this hurt. Um, I've made up my mind. Uh, this is how I'm going to respond. Instead of holding it, I'm going to release. Right? Instead of um, revisiting, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to remember. I'm not going to give it, you know, it, um, I'm not going to consider it as important. And I'm not going to uh, give it that weightage of time and effort. I'm going to release that. Okay. Okay. So next we, we, we look at uh, four more things that uh, when it comes to staying emotionally whole, of course, uh, some of these things we, we looked at in those um, 10 steps. Uh, four more things, and uh, yeah, I think we can just go through this list. Uh, renouncing lies with the truth of God's word. We saw that that uh, um, the lies um, actually point to the resource of the enemy. It's uh, something that is uh, uh, totally opposite, or you know, it's it's something that is mixed with truth. It could be that also, but it's something that um, that the enemy brings in. Right, so we renounce that how with the truth of God's word. Okay, so we we go with God, what God is saying. We go with God, what God is prescribing, and what God is suggesting, and what He's inviting us to. Right. So that's how we renounce. We renounce the lies, but we also go with the truth of God's word. So it's very important. Right. So we speak blessing, cancel curse. Okay. We and we guard ourselves against negative emotions. Okay. And uh, we practice the power of forgiveness. Now we, we look at it. Um, uh, maybe points two, three, and four. Um, we look at it in detail. We'll go with it. Uh, I mean, we just go through that. Uh, the first one, of course, we'll, we'll you know we'll just mention that. Um, but the second, third, and fourth, we will we'll go through it and how we can speak blessing in order to cancel the curse. Right, and uh, we'll see that. Okay, so we'll we'll stop here for today. And um, we'll continue in our next class. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.